Professor Graham Kennedy is the principal developer of TAX, which you actually just heard about in Tim's talk previously. Um, and Keemstock. What's that? And Keemstock. And Keemstock, right. TAX is very important and everybody uh -huh. uses it. <laughs> uh, also, he's written a new optimization library called Paropt. I'm pretty sure he's going to talk about both of these things. Uh, recently, uh, we've been working together. Is it? Uh oh, color issue. Maybe Keem has a, a better adapter for you. <laughs> That's a Windows thing. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's yeah, your adapters. Um, so. Thanks. Recently, he's been trying to integrate Tax uh, and his prop library, both with OpenMDAO. There's actually several different people, as you can tell, trying to integrate Tax with OpenMDAO. So it's a popular research activity. No, it's there. Yeah, there it's, it's, just, yep. it's just, it's just taking good. a sec. Yeah. Good. Perfect. <laughs> so um, I don't think his integration activities have gone completely smoothly. And in particular, I think Graham is a good example of uh, what I'll call a, a software engineering clash, where the way he wants to write the software is maybe structurally a little differently from, from how OpenMDO is actually currently written. So it's a good opportunity to stress the uh, community discussion and civilness of the conversation sure. part, of the, <laughs> part of this process. <laughs> well, th thanks, Justin. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to talk a bit about our efforts to use OpenMDAO, and, um, and particularly for uh, HPC stands for is uh, high performance computing, particularly in these, these large scale applications. So I'm going to be focusing the discussion around kind of two applications we've looked at. On the left, we've got a, a helicopter uh, where there's a multi-body dynamic simulation uh, in tax, which is doing the simulation of the response of the rotors to uh, aerodynamic loads. Uh, and then CFD on that side is done with fun 3D. And there's this coupling that's, that's occurring uh, and it's a time dependent problem. Uh, on the right, I've got a um, to large scale topology optimization uh, application. Uh, topology optimization has already been discussed in the context of the level set method. I'm gonna be using the density method. I'll describe that very briefly. Um, in, in both of these cases, uh, these simulations have to be run on large compute clusters with many, many processors. Uh, and so, so that's um, kind of the first, first question that I wanted to, to address is why do we really want to use uh, OpenMDAO or why should we use OpenMDAO? And so um, we've been, uh, when we've been doing these simulations and these design optimization problems, we haven't been using OpenMDAO. The reason why I want to use OpenMDA going forward, OpenMDAO going forward, is that um, I want to bring in more uh, different disciplines. I want to drive boundary conditions on the structure, structural topology optimization from uh, different uh, disciplinary considerations. And I want to increase modularity uh, both between our codes uh, internally and, and using external codes. And so I think OpenMDAO has the potential to be able to do this. Uh, I, I think there's some, some limitations, and I'm going to discuss that, and, and some things that we can, could, could possibly be improved. Okay? And then uh, I think um, this has the potential to make our lives easier, which is, is really the reason we want to, make, we want to be doing this. Uh, so I'm, I'm briefly going to de describe these kind of uh, two motivating examples that I've given. Here, uh, so the first is uh, air elasticity, air elasticity, and, and air elastic design optimization. Uh, and in our group, we've been developing a framework that we call Fun to Fem, uh, that integrates uh, Fun 3D and uh, Tax to perform both uh, static air elastic analysis and optimization, as well as these time dependent air elastic optimization, time dependent air elastic optimizations. So the framework we've developed is up here on, on kind of the, the upper left here, uh, where, where we're passing information between uh, tax and uh, fun 3D through this fun to fem layer. And uh, this layer here has to be uh, the, the uh, distribution of information, loads and displacements between structures and arrow has to occur in parallel and be very efficient. Uh, but there can be a large bandwidth of information that's passed back and forth. 
Uh, this is one area where we could place OpenMDAO within this so that it would make this uh, more modular, and that's what we're working towards with Justin on this uh, OMFSI work. Um, and just to show you kind of what this, this coupling looks like here, the, uh, the contours on the blades are the coefficients of pressure, and um, the dynamics of even all these, uh, the, the, the rotor hub here, that's this all driven by some rigid body dynamics, and the blades are governed by uh, a flexible beam, beam model here uh, with, with transfer occurring at every step. And this being able to work in the time domain is also important for, for fixed wing design applications, which we've also looked at, uh, where we've uh, looked at flutter in the time domain, uh, where we're doing, again, a simulation where we're passing uh, information between structures and, and arrow at, at every time step. Uh, and so in this application, um, we were just looking at identifying the flutter point, um, but we were, were working on extending this to do, to do uh, optimization with, with flutter constraints. So in these problems, um, we're dealing with kind of order a thousand design variables, for instance. Uh, but the, the key thing that OpenMDA will provide is an ability to pass um, between disciplines, information in a, in, a, in a parallel and scalable manner. On the, on the other end of uh, the application that I want to use to motivate this discussion is, is topology optimization. So we're, we use a density-based approach to topology optimization. And so kind of a, a, one way to, to, to think of this is we have a, a problem definition where we've got uh, boundary conditions, like support conditions, and loading conditions that are placed on in, in the design problem. And we want to figure out what structure uh, maximizes some performance metric of interest subject to constraints that fits within this problem domain without imposing any initial kind of uh, conditions on the shape of the structure or its topology. So the way that this works in the density-based approach is we discretize this uh, domain into a series of elements, and for each element, add design variables to, to, to each of those elements. And then um, those design variables then control whether material is placed within the element or not. And so this leads to a large set, uh, a large design space, because basically for every element that you're adding, you're also adding design variables. Uh, and then you optimize that using uh, not from a discrete perspective, you use a, a, a relaxation, so it's a continuous problem, and add penalization so that it forces it to, to a, a zero one solution where we'll, we'll, it'll have structure or void there in, in the kind of classic approach. So uh, we've developed a series of, of tools to be able to do this, especially for, for large scale applications. So here, uh, we, are taking, we are using CAD as, a, as an input through this uh, EGADS uh, wrapper. We're then meshing that. And then here where I think OpenMDAO can come and play a role is if these boundary conditions here are not kind of fixed a priori, but are dependent on some external uh, physics uh, that's governed by some other discipline, then we should be, we should be able to form a coupled problem where some of these boundary conditions uh, are, are then determined through, through an external analysis. And so there's, it can come in there. And then also within the optimization itself here, uh, TAX is our finite element solver, which takes in the mesh that's generated with this, this TMR tool that we use. And then uh, it's a gradient-based optimization so we pass objective and, and gradient values to our, our uh, optimizer par opt and then pass them back. The, the real challenge here is that the size of the design vector could be huge. So order um, hundreds of millions of design variables or, or even we're, we're approaching billions of design variables. Uh, so that's, that's a challenge. Um, and, but what, what the advantage to this uh, being able to kind of handle this with an open MDAO would be was potentially we could use uh, different optimizers. Uh, right now we're, we're really uh, fixed with using par opt, but if another optimizer came along, it'd be great to be able to 
um, uh, swap them out easily. Uh, and then par part of why we have to use uh, par up, part of why we developed it is because of the largest scale of the design vector. The design vector is distributed. So it's a, the design vector itself is distributed. And by doing that, we can distribute computation and achieve parallelism just in the optimization process itself. Um, and so uh, in, in particular, we've been able to, to, to scale up to about 125 uh, million design variables. Um, th this is kind of a slide just focusing on, on how we handle meshes of that size. So we also have to mesh in parallel. Uh, I'm not sure that OpenMDA really has a, a, a central role at here, but I think that, that goes to kind of some of the setup issues that we've have been mentioned previously that I'll bring up again in a minute. Uh, and, and just to kind of show you a, a movie of how this works, I'm gonna exit here and try and run this pair of view thing here. I'm actually pleased that show, showed up. So the, um, just to give you a background here, so this is doing a topology optimization. This is done on my laptop uh, on four processors, or four cores. Uh, the, the far end of the domain is fixed, and then there's two loads applied uh, at this close end of the structure. And you can see that there's this uh, adaptive process that's, that's taking place. Um, so as, as it hits the adaptation, you'll see it adds elements and uh, coarsens other elements. And so this is, again, the size of the design space is changing. Um, and in this case, we're approaching this via just a total reinitialization of, of, the, of the problem. So in the largest cases that we've, uh, oh, so this has about uh, 350,000 uh, design variables in it at the final design. Uh, but in the largest cases, we've gone up to uh, problems with 125 million design variables and about uh, 330 million elements. Um, and, and this is the, the case that's shown up here at the top. And then this other case here where we've done adaptive mesh refinement in order to reduce the size of, of, of the meshes. Okay, so there's kind of two, two things I wanted to um, kind of emphasize about that uh, with, with, those, with those examples. The first is that we're dealing with very large uh, design vectors and very large state vectors with uh, approaching a billion degrees of freedom. Um, and so our code attacks uh, and par up have been uh, optimized for these applications. Um, and uh, we've, we've done a, put a lot of work into optimizing those vector operations in order to achieve good scalability on, on these, for these HPC applications. Um, so the, the vectors uh, are used for a number of different things. Um, in particular, I think one of the things that uh, OpenMBAO would want to see is a residual, right? So, so the residual evaluation um, is not just based on uh, kind of a distributed array. There's also private data that's in the vector objects that it uses to perform these optimized transfers of information between different processors. Uh, so as a result, the, the vector is not just a, an array that's distributed, it's, it's a, an array that's distributed plus some extra information that's, that's in it. Um, and, and the reason that, that we do that is so that when we scatter values from uh, different processors in order to achieve kind of a consistent values across the mesh that's just been distributed, uh, then we need to do a scatter operation. When we form a residual, we need to, to do this uh, add gather operation where we, we add, add components across different time scales um, or, or diff across different uh, processors, excuse me. Uh, the other application here that I wanted to highlight is these time dependent problems. So these, I, I think that this is gonna become more critical to add these uh, time dependent constraints or constraints in the time domain or maybe not in a time domain, but in a, in a pseudo spectral domain. Um, and uh, those, those kind of schemes often involve uh, 
loose coupling uh, where we don't fully converge residuals. And so there's just some, some uh, the, and it's very common in air elasticity to do that. And so thinking about how to handle that particular case is also, also an issue. Um, and while we want to use DIMOS, and I think DIMOS is a powerful tool, I don't think DIMOS is suitable for all applications. And so, um, <laughs> so sorry, Rob. But I still think that OpenMDAO can play a role here uh, in, in these simulations. So. Okay, so um, I wanted to, to uh, talk a little bit about uh, tax in order to kind of describe how we think we can, uh, or how we have um, uh, implemented a wrapper for tax in, in OpenMDAO. Uh, and so I, I, I don't want to dive too far into the weeds, but I want to get a little bit into the weeds here. Okay. So the, the, the main things in tax, there's this tax assembler object that's like the, the primary class that does basically all the high level operations in, in tax. And the goal with that is that once we've created this kind of tax assembler object, all the uh, operations are, uh, that we do subsequent to that are model independent. So we create this tax assembler object. And if you write a script to do optimization with this tax assembler object, it should be able to do that uh, same script, whether it's uh, topology optimization or a helicopter or a wing box. That's the goal, at least. Um, and so that, that can be a powerful tool. Uh, all, all the tax code is written in uh, C++, and then there's a wrapper for it with, with Cython. Uh, here I'm going to show you some of the um, uh, C++ code just at a very high level, uh, um, uh, just, just to kind of illustrate what, the, what the, the high level operations are. So we've got kind of creating design vectors, uh, evaluating the functions of interest, creating a, a state vector, and uh, setting uh, uh, state variables back into the assembler object, both the uh, state variable values themselves, as well as their time, their, optionally their time derivatives, and then assembling a residual and assembling Jacobians. And so these are all based on this, this uh, tax BVEC type class that does a block vector class that's a distributed vector class with these optimized uh, scatter and add gather operations. So the way that the, the adjoint works is, I think of the adjoint in terms of, there's, there's basically four terms in the adjoint. Uh, there's, uh, first, first we solve the adjoint equation. So for that, we need to form the Jacobian, where we use that code that I previously showed to just, just create the, the Jacobian and, and solve, then we can use that to solve this, this linear system. The uh, adjoint, uh, the right-hand side for the adjoint is created through this, uh, uh, state variable sensitivity. Uh, the, the total, once, once the adjoint equations are solved for the adjoint variable, then we compute the total derivative by, by adding the contributions from the adjoint to, um, from, from the, the direct dependence of the function on the design variables and the implicit dependence of the function on, through the state variables. Okay. So this is the case when this is a steady problem. But for unsteady problems, it uses very similar code. Uh, basically, what will happen is the sensitivity information will be accumulated. And at the end, there's a, um, uh, an add operation that takes place to make values consistent across processors. OK, so um, with that context, I'm, I'm going to describe kind of some of the uh, aspects of our uh, current wrapper for, for tax. Um, so uh, tax assembler here is the, the, main, the main class. We, we treat this as an implicit component. And uh, it, with some additional information for assembling the Jacobian and solving uh, linear systems. Uh, and then the outputs. So the functions of interest we handle through this, this tax 
function wrapper for OpenMDAO that we treat as an explicit component. Okay, so the, the assembler component then has to uh, solve for the state vector uh, given a set of this inputs as the design vector. That state vector then gets passed to the tax function class, uh, which then uh, also takes in the design vector and the state vector and outputs function values that can be used as an objective or constraints. Um, one of the problems we have with this approach is that it's sometimes a little awkward to uh, initialize and sh uh, share data between these different um, objects. Um, so the, the tax function class takes in a tax assembler as an object. So there's this precedence relationship that has to exist. They have to exist on the same processors. Uh, and you can't create a second instance of tax assembler that's the same and interchange the two. They've got to be, this, it's got to all link back to the same, same tax assembler object. Uh, otherwise, it's going to give you, it's going to hopefully give you a warning. If not, it's going to give you a seg fault. Um, uh, yeah, so, so, so this, this adds some complication to the, especially the initialization process. Uh, in the implicit version of, of the uh, tax assembler object, we, we implement all these different uh, uh, functions, the apply and solve nonlinear and, and uh, solve linear and apply linear. Right now, we're just, we've just implemented with this with linear analysis, so this, this is pretty straightforward for us. Um, one of the things that we're doing, though, is we're copying data into and out of the, these vectors at each iteration. And that, that leads to two things. It duplicates memory, and then there's an extra copy operation that occurs. I'm going to talk about that next. Uh, one of the, the problems that we, we've run into is uh, OpenMDAO is, has a very nice integration with PyOp Sparse, but that breaks in, the, in a lot of these applications because, especially for topology optimization, because PyOp Sparse is assuming that we have a single serial vector that's a global design vector. And uh, that's, that's not the case for all of our applications. Uh, that, that brings me to this, uh, this, this next slide. Um, so, um, my, my philosophy in a, that I think that OpenMDAO sh should, you guys should consider is a, a bring your own vector approach. And what I mean by this is, I, I've, I've spent a lot of time with these, uh, implementing these, these optimized um, vectors for tax. Um, and uh, you guys want to copy the data in and out of them all the time. And I've, so I've got the data in there in a certain format, and it, you know, I've, I've, I've spent a lot of time with that. And uh, it's, it seems to me that you, th there should be kind of a, a cleaner way to maybe integrate vectors rather than copying components in, in, into and out of them, and uh, that, that you might want to consider that. Um, so, so a lot of the operations right now use this copy-paste approach where we copy from one, paste it into the other. Uh, but, but I think for HPC applications, especially at these big scales, it, it's not going to, it's not going to work. Um, my, my claim is that uh, BYOV, bring your own vector, is kind of the uh, required to, to be able to scale. Um, it, it's going to be complicated, it might be complicated to implement. I think there's some options, including kind of overriding uh, NumPy type operations that we can consider if you really want to go there. Um, anyway, I wanted to bring that up for discussion. So uh, we want to use uh, OpenMDAO to kind of meet challenges in integrating these problems and take them forward to multidisciplinary applications. Um, and uh, the main thing I want to highlight here is, is BYOV. OK. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Let me just, okay, oh, yeah. Uh, the question is, uh, am I planning on making the tax net open MDA wrapper public? Yes, yes. I'm not sure whether it'll go in the uh, tax uh, repo itself or not. 
but uh, we, we will make it public in some way. I, th I think that's probably the best place for it. I don't know if there's other opinions on that. Since Graham brought up BYOB, I, I feel uh, it's important for me to say I'm, I'm open to giving this a try. I'm scared of it though. <laughs> um, there's been a lot of optimization that went on in OpenMDO, not optimization in the MDO sense, but like code optimization. <laughs> Uh, that was built around the idea that OpenMDO owns the entire vector and that we get a continuous chunk of memory. So I think, again, we're going to have to sit down and like have a workshop where we figure out if it's possible. Well, I'm sure it is possible, but figure out how to do it without cratering the performance that we've clawed our way to. Currently. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I, I, I understand why you've made the design choice you've made. Yeah. And I, I think it works in a kind of a range of applications. Right, but but the, before the, if we stretch the application, then I think it stretches, stretches code. So. I mean, Eric hinted at this, but the, the design development pattern of OpenMDO is basically uh, an arms race, right? So like we make it work for the problems that we experience. And then as soon as I make it work for a problem, then somebody out there just makes a bigger problem. <laughs> so. All right. Thanks, Trey.